Next up on the agenda is, uh, is our performance measures discussion. Scott Rattery is going to lead that discussion, I hope. Uh, he is the fleet manager for Michigan. Uh, he's he's uh, been with MDOT since 08. Is that right? Uh, he had a, a career all before MDOT as well, it sounds like, and uh, was 28 years of experience in the corporate and federal government arenas, uh, background in logistics and directing both daily operations and strategic initiatives in the area of fleet project and program and maintenance management. So Scott, okay. welcome. Thank Thanks, you. Tim. You bet. Okay, well, I'm glad to be here today to give you an update on uh, performance metrics. Uh, first, let me introduce the uh, team from Michigan here. My boss, Sonia Shire, she's a division administrator. And we got Scott Poirier, our fleet, fleet specialist. He replaced Dan Smith um, and Andy Banish, our fleet management system analyst. They've been pivotal in uh, uh, collaborating and uh, working on this effort, as have many people in this audience. Uh, it's just not a Michigan thing. We've had a lot of meetings over the past few years to work through this. And so what I want to do today is just give, give us an update on what's going on. Okay, we're gonna go over uh, several things on the agenda today. I'm gonna point out a few that are of particular note to us. Uh, one, we'll recap uh, what we agreed to do from the 2014 conference in Orlando. Um, we're also gonna briefly review the uh, reporting status of each of the regions and where we stand with that. And then uh, we're gonna cover a little bit about the fleet metrics survey we did earlier this year to address uh, additional metrics that we might want to consider reporting. And then the last part uh, down there suggested next steps and future goals. We're going to have a little bit of a discussion at the end of the uh, meeting where I'm interested in your input and going to ask uh, for some participation in uh, some of our future endeavors. And then we'll have any questions that anybody has. Okay, believe it or not, this initiative has been going on for almost six years this coming uh, this coming September when we met back in Pittsburgh in uh, 2010. I won't go over every one of these. There's like three different slides. There's been a lot of meetings, a lot of uh, briefings and webinars and things like that. But a, a couple of key events, you'll notice at the bottom of the slide where the uh, uh, we did some resolutions for AASHTO and the ESCOM and they've got approved supporting performance metrics and supporting the national conference that we're having today. And then subsequently, uh, you'll see at the top of the slide or a couple bullets down, the Standing Committee on Highways approved those resolutions, so they're supporting this, this initiative. And then in 2013, Dennis in the back, that's our uh, photographer, filmographer there, he, uh, we worked with him at NCPP and he created the website for us. It's an excellent website that harbors a lot of information on reporting metrics and a lot of other supporting data that uh, helps with the effort. And then a couple of months later in July of 13 is when we got uh, Bob Ellingsworth worked with us in NAFA and we got support to use their codes so we weren't uh, doing any copyright infringement with them in terms of kind of leveling the playing field in terms of the groups, the equipment and vehicle groups for reporting of metrics. Everything in the green down is what's happened since uh, Orlando in 2014. We've had a total of 11 webinars to talk about this issue and to talk about uh, the M5 fleet management system. We've also done a couple ESCOM briefings as, as well. And then at the bottom, we got the survey that we'll talk about later. Okay, first we want to talk a little bit about the recap from the uh, National Conference in Orlando. We gave a similar briefing to the day, the folks have heard this before, a lot of it may be uh, kind of uh, repetitive, but there is a lot of new information as well. And at the time, a lot of states were uh, on board and reporting metrics, and that was good. We had a good initial first year. If you notice, the website was operational in May of 13. We started actually, people started reporting in uh, July of 13. So we had a buildup of three years or so where we went through and defined what we wanted for the metrics, how we were going to report the metrics, what the guidelines or parameters were going to be before we actually reported. But also a lot of states uh, indicated they, there was a lot of roadblocks, a lot of issues they were dealing with. We'll talk more about that later. But from fleet management systems to trying to align to the NAFA code to having the resources to do this type of project have been challenges. And I think will continue to be challenges with 
the small fleet departments. Most of the folks I've talked to, there's departments like Tim's, there's two of two people. Uh, in our office, there's four or five. Some have, if they're lucky, they have a big office. They have eight or nine people. So uh, we're not really uh, blessed with a lot of resources these days to handle uh, a lot of these things. But you know, performance metrics are very important. John touched on that earlier, and I'll be uh, addressing that as well. We had a couple of goals from the meeting, and we also had a couple of action items. So the goal was uh, in 2014, when we went to that meeting, we had 17 states reporting. That was after uh, one year of reporting. You know, the first year, so you get all the low-hanging fruit, the people that already are reporting metrics and have the resources to do so. So we wanted to increase that by 100% or double it to 34 states, which I think was pretty aggressive uh, at the time, but we have made good progress. We had several action items uh, to help engage the states instead of uh, one or two states uh, getting out there and having a webinar and trying to get people going, we identified a what we called a champion in each region. And those individuals worked with engaging states to help reporting. And we have a couple of slides we'll go over with you real briefly and show you what we did in regards uh, to that effort. And you can see the folks that are associated uh, with that. John and Jim are here today. We also agreed to have quarterly champion conference calls, which we did to talk about some of the issues and how we could better address uh, assisting folks with reporting metrics. Then we also initiate quarterly M5 conference calls, which were important to discuss the fleet management system, not only in regards to the metrics, but to benchmark other practices uh, with utilizing and managing our, our systems that track our inventories. And then we also committed, uh, Michigan DOT did, to help with uh, assisting other states, which I think uh, we've had, we won't take too much credit for that, but folks have reached out to us and we've tried to help them either calculate their numbers or uh, help them with understanding uh, what we're doing in Michigan that could maybe help, uh, help them as well. So the team purpose of the champions, I kind of addressed that already. Uh, listed below are the uh, we had conference calls for about a year, and then we expanded it to all the states, which was a recommendation of the champions to get everybody on the call that uh, was either reporting or not reporting. But some of the topics at the bottom are some of the things you see we talked about uh, in regards to our, uh, our meetings, and we have minutes for all those if you're ever interested in that. Uh, I sent minutes to the participants in those uh, webinars. So these are additionally some of the things we did. We talked about the regions having their own webinars, phone calls, emails, site visits, more surveys. I got the thumbs down because we felt like we were surveyed, you know, surveying people to death. So basically it boiled down to people calling other states, emailing other states. And then we ultimately the last year uh, after 15 started including uh, all the states, or I was trying to do that by the email um, addresses and stuff I had. So then we kind of identify, okay, what are the specific reasons states aren't reporting? And there may be some that are not on this list, but I think these were the, some of the key ones that I mentioned already, the, the, labor, the labor and the resources to do it, the alignment with the NAFA codes, uh, some states uh, transitioning to new fleet management systems or having problems with their current fleet management systems. So it made it uh, kind of challenging to do that. There was a couple of states that said, well, we're just not gonna report metrics. I don't know what kind of data they were collecting or not were collecting, but they just said they weren't going to do that. And then some management in some states were concerned with posting their data on a site that people could go look at and maybe it would cause, uh, they consider the information to be confidential or whatever. But those were the, those were the exception. We also talked about there at the bottom, as we call it, target the low-hanging fruit. The four metrics we chose back in 2011, uh, some of them are easier to report than others, but a couple of them are metrics that is fleet, fleet managers or fleet management operations ought to know. You ought to know how old your fleet is. You ought to know uh, what part of your fleet needs PM inspections and what part doesn't need PM inspections. And so those were the two we tried to focus on because we figured everybody must have that information. Then we uh, talked about the other action item was the M5 uh, fleet webinars. And the key with that was we, there's about 25 states out there that use M5, um, or 25 state, state functions that use M5. And so we felt like uh, by getting this uh, out there and discussing this, we could maybe uh, promote and uh, 
maybe enhance uh, performance metric reporting, but we could also address a lot of other issues that people were having with M5, even though the same fleet management systems, different people had uh, different folks that were managing or operating those systems, and it's always good to collaborate on best practices and, and, uh, and good ideas there. So we see, you can see we have had numerous uh, calls. We try to do it, uh, or webinars, we try to do it every quarter. We haven't always stuck right to that, but we've typically had seven or eight states on the call uh, on the webinars when we've done that. So, and we've published minutes and provided slides for those as well. This is a list, and it's not all inclusive, of all the different things we talked about at these M5 uh, webinars. And even if you didn't have M5, you were invited to attend. Um, it might help you in, uh, if you're procuring another fleet management system to uh, think about the questions you need to be asking the vendor and everything. And then the last thing we committed to was assisting other states. About mid-slide there, there was about eight states that at some point in time reached out to us, um, and six or seven of those states are reporting metrics. Not that we were, you know, we're solely responsible for doing that, but we have had webinars with other states um, based on metrics or based on other things that we've been doing in regards to fleet. And I think that's been very helpful, not only for them, but for us as well, to listen to other folks' ideas. So. Uh, and we're always, uh, Andy does all the reports for us. We're always willing to share reports. If you want to reach out to me or Andy or, or Sonia or Scott, we can provide that information. And we've actually, uh, I think in at least one case, Andy's helped somebody tabulate their data for them. So if all, if all you do is track it in a spreadsheet, we can, we can help you figure that out if, if need be. So, so we were pretty active with all those, uh, all those action items. So now we'll talk a little bit about the reporting. Our goal was to get to 34 states. Um, you know, we weren't going to turn into pumpkins or anything if that didn't happen, and it, and it didn't happen. We got ended up with 27 states as of this meeting, and that was a 20% improvement from uh, 2014. But I think all things considered, uh, in one year we went from no reporting to getting the states that had active fleet management systems and had metrics in place. And then we've added 10 the last year. If you look at that, two thirds of those states that are reporting are reporting at least three or four of the metrics. So they're doing almost all the, all the measurements. Uh, 22 of the 27 states have actually are consistently reporting on an annual basis. Um, and I think that's pretty good. Of the five that aren't reporting, three have, three have reported in the last 16 or 17 months. So there's like two states that haven't reported since we initially initially uh, started. So I think overall that's pretty good. Um, now we'll run through each region and just show you the states. This isn't meant to be a sharp stick in your eye or anything, but just show everybody who's reporting, who's not. That way we don't have to go through the website and, and look at that. But we do have a lot of states that are very close or very aggressively uh, working to report because I've talked to them. They've called me, emailed me about what they're doing. And uh, we know that uh, we'll have more states reporting. And I'm, I'm optimistic that we may have as many as 35 states reporting um, at some point in time because they've said they are interested in, in doing that. So in the Northeast, we have uh, five of the 11 states reporting. And uh, in the Midwest, seven of the 13. In the Southeast, six of the 13. And the West is doing, I think, exceptionally well. They've got nine of 13 states that are reporting. Uh, eight states uh, before this meeting had identified that they they were really hoping to have some reporting prior to this meeting, but ran into various uh, uh, issues that not all of them were of their own making. They were dealing with their vendor or somebody else, and actually two other states have approached me this week and said that they're working toward that goal as well. We have one state that was unable to uh, so they couldn't they couldn't uh, align the NAFA code, so I, I don't know if we'll ever hear from them again or not. I guess we'll find out. One state had a, a fleet manager position that was vacant, so wasn't able to really hook up with somebody that could uh, make a commitment because the leadership in that office was out. And then since the last webinar, haven't heard much feedback from about 10 states, and three states have said they're reviewing the codes, and one is in particular uh, dealing with some fleet management system issues that they're trying to reconcile. So um, that's where we stand with the uh, 
reporting right now. So I still think even though we didn't meet the goal, maybe it was a little aggressive, but we still did a pretty good job of getting where we are right now. So I won't get on the website today. If you're not familiar with it, go to www.emtsp.org. There's a lot of information there other than the metrics. Uh, Dennis did a, a fabulous job of setting the website up for us. There's an information and form section where you can get the form that you report the metrics on. There's a contact list there for the people from each state that you can get their name, phone number, email address, what their position is in regards to a fleet performance metrics. There's a benchmarking sheet which shows you which states are reporting which metrics and whether they're red, green, or yellow, so you don't have to click on each website to see you know, what this state's doing. Uh, but if you do click on the website, there's also a, a link at the bottom of each state web page that is reporting, uh, that says supporting documentation. And in that link, a lot of states provide briefings or data, priority tools, spreadsheets, or whatever that tell you uh, what their uh, replacement guidelines are and things like that. So it's just not about the metrics. There is a place on there for you to post other fleet information that people uh, share. I know Bob uh, Ellingsworth from Minnesota, we had a conference call with them, what, a few months ago or something, and we they were nosing around on the website and found something we had and was interested in talking about how we prioritized our replacement of vehicles and equipment. And so we, we set up a webinar with them and probably spent at least an hour talking about what we were doing. And they shared some of the ideas of what we were, we were doing, or they were doing. So it proved very, very beneficial. Uh, access and updates are strictly done by NCPP. I deal with Dennis or another gentleman over there that helps update the data. When you click on the form or the link it should auto-populate the email for you, so you don't have to type in the address to mail it to, it, depending on how your browser's set up, but it also courtesy copies me on there so I can see that somebody's um, submitted something so I can follow up with NCPP as, as well. So it's really pretty, pretty cool, actually, the way it's set up, but we're always open for uh, inputs on how to improve the website as well. And there's also a link on there that once you get to the uh, specific state, you can click on the contacts list and it'll take you to the list of all states and then it highlights the states that have reported. You can click on the state name and it'll take you to their website. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really pretty interactive. This is a sample of the DOT contact list. We're presently, it's, uh, as of the end of January, I know there's a couple of names that are out to date. We got a replace Jeannie on there with Amy and there's a couple of phone numbers. A guy from Pennsylvania, Jim Smith, has left. I think the guy's new name is uh, the uh, manager now is John Honenberger or something like that. No, Rob Honenberger. He took Jim's place and then there's a guy, Mike Mentor, I think, that is the guy that heads the fleet section that does the metrics. So it's a good way to figure out um, if this is if this uh, how, to, how to get a hold of somebody and we will also uh, I'll probably be sending this out to get updates I sometimes I get Dennis or Dick to help with this as well so so if you see something wrong get with me we'll get it fixed but we'll get an updated one out there this is just a second page with the rest of the folks plus it includes Saskatchewan as well as a matter of fact Saskatchewan did send in part of a metric so they're trying to report as well so good on them so we call this reporting requirements. These are kind of like more reporting goals. When we first started this off, we said, well, if we ask people to report, they're gonna say, when do I report or what do I do? So we, the team at the time basically picked two time frames, um, January and July of each year, standard form, which is a copy at the bottom there, and then EMTSP has made a commitment. They try to you know, post it in the same month that it's reported. And it's okay to report incre incremental progress. Some states initially said, well, we want to get all the metrics down before we report. Well, that's okay. You can report one. Or you can report part of one if that's what you can, if that's what you're able to do at the time. So there's uh, no harm, no foul there. You can do what you can do. So why report? I think John hit on that in his briefing today. There's a lot of positive things when you get in front of management or executive management and tell them what you're doing or unable to do because you don't have the resources. And performance measures is one of those. 
It's been very beneficial to the state of Michigan and I'm sure other states as well. But it also provides benchmarking and best practice opportunities, sharing. Tell you what I've learned, I've met more people and learned more about other states' operations since I've been involved in this. So other than the work associated with it, which isn't really that much, um, it's been uh, really beneficial to me to get to know folks and know who to call when I have an issue about something that's totally unrelated to this. <clears throat> There's also um, some uh, recognition visibility by being having you on the website. You know, somebody said, well, I don't really get a benefit from this. I don't get any extra money for it or anything. No, you don't get paid to do this. This is just something that is fleet we're trying to get visibility on. Because as most of you know, usually the operations side may get sometimes more of the money, more of the visibility, and the logistics or fleet side, you know, they always, the expectation is always there that that vehicle will be there, that piece of equipment will be there. And sometimes we're kind of taken for, taken for granted and the money's not always there to support the replacement. I think John referred to in his uh, briefing this morning that you know 50% of their fleet was past replacement. Well, it's the same in Michigan as well, and I'm sure other states may be better, but a lot may be worse because you just don't get the funding to replace equipment as frequently as you want. So this is a way to get us out front and get visibility with, uh, with management. And it's uh, very important. The MAP 21 initiative, um, Fleet metrics are not part of that. That's mainly operations, but uh, that's something that, uh, you know, what we do with our vehicles and equipment contribute to the condition of roads and bridges. So we need to be sure that our fleet is up to speed and ready to go. And maybe that's something uh, we'll talk about later that we can look into a little closer about how can fleet get into that reporting of MAP 21. Um, and that, that might help get us uh, more visibility and more, more attention. I mean, like, uh, you know, Doug, your director seemed to be really engaged with the fleet. He talked about when he took over about not wanting to be in charge of a junkyard and uh, how he gets out there and talks to the workers and stuff like that. And that's, that's what you want to do is get upper management engaged, get them out there looking at the vehicles and equipment so they, they are aware of what their folks are using. Um, it's very important, like he said, when you develop specifications that you talk to the user. You just don't do it in a vacuum because then they don't get the equipment that they need to do the job. So, very important. So, examples of some of the benefits. Uh, some of these are things we've experienced directly in Michigan. Some are feedbacks that uh, feedback we've gotten from other states. Uh, it definitely, for us in Michigan, it has improved our visibility at the uh, management level. We post our, our metrics on a website every quarter. Um, high visibility issues or concern areas, I send a, a personal email to my boss and she will forward it to that region, uh, region engineer or something to get attention on a particular matter. And then when it comes to buying new equipment, uh, we put a spreadsheet together with all this priority data and they are able to use that and look at a lot of the condition of the uh, uh, the units that we want to replace and make budget decisions on what we purchase or what we don't purchase depending on the amount of money. The second bullet here, this is uh, from us in Michigan as well. When we, when we started reporting metrics, our PM compliance documentation wise was 47%. Three years later, it was 95% just because we're getting a visibility and attention out there on people performing their inspections and documenting them in the fleet management system. Andy sends a weekly report out to every garage that shows them every inspection for every piece of equipment, whether it's due or not due or whatever. And they, so they have a piece of paper, the mechanic does, every Monday morning, he can print out a piece of paper and he can see what needs an inspection and what doesn't need an inspection. So very beneficial. Higher visibility for funding replacements. A couple of states have mentioned that to me. Improved ability to report seasonal, uh, seasonal impacts. What that means is, you know, we had a bad winter a couple of winters ago, and our director was asking the question is, how many plow trucks do we have available to get out there on the roads and do work? And so we were able to provide that answer versus having to pick up the phone and call every single garage and say, how many trucks you have? How many trucks you have? So this type of information will prove very beneficial in that. It helps with fleet reductions and reassignments. We've reduced some of our uh, 
uh, items, you know, by four or five percent. That may not sound like a whole lot, but I mean, it's 15 or 20 units. And we continually, when we do our utilization reports, I'm always asking people, well, when are you ready to turn this in? You're not using it. Somebody else can use it. And uh, so we get a lot of a lot of attention on that. And then once again, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for network uh, networking and sharing of uh, of good ideas. So to the survey, the survey says, what show is that? The, uh, not the Price is Right, but a Family Feud or something. Um, in 2011, before we went to Kansas City for the Northeast Midwest Conference, we did a survey um, to ask people what they thought were the top metrics we should be focusing on in fleet. And so the four metrics we have now, PM compliance, replacement recommended, availability, and utilization were the ones that came out of that meeting um, that we wanted to work on reporting. So we spent a couple years working up the issue statements and developing the parameters and how we were going to report it and all that. But there was also a list of other things people voted on, and that's this list here. So the ones highlighted in green, we said, well, when we had the webinar in January, we will put a survey out. That was somebody's suggestion. And we'll just throw those out as examples, not meant to be that it had to be those particular metrics because there had been a push by several states saying that, uh, you know, we want to we want to start sharing other metrics uh, with the other DOTs and stuff. So that's one of our next initiatives is look to see what metric or metrics do we want to add to the four that are out there. I think if we moved ahead or when we move ahead with that, we're only talking one or two more at this point. It's not like we're going to add four or five, six or seven. This will be an incremental uh, type thing. So we, so we pick those four and put them in a survey, and we put the survey out in March. And the next couple of slides I'll explain are basically a cut and paste from the survey about what was in the survey, you know, the purpose of the survey. You can see that, the history. And then we listed the questions with the responses. So the four that were in green are the four that are listed here. And we just asked people, the, you know, the percentage of scheduled equipment maintenance services versus unscheduled. So in other words, what you have planned to do, what's not planned to do. And 30% of the respondents thought, okay, that would be a good metric to report. The next one was rework percentage. You can call it repeat or whatever. A vehicle comes in, goes out, operator has the same problem. In our case, we reported every 60 days. Um, if it comes back in with the same job due in, in, within a 60-day period, then we can consider it like a repeat write-up. 10% uh, of the respondents thought, well, maybe that was a good one. Work order turnaround time, when you open a work order, it's delivered to get worked on, gets repaired, gets returned to the user. Uh, nobody seemed to like that one for whatever reason. Maybe they couldn't calculate it or whatever. And then the last one was, number of in-house versus outsourced repairs, and that could be calculated by the number of work orders, the dollar value associated with it, and that got 70% of the respondents thinking that was a good idea. Um, not that we're stuck with these, these were just examples. We also asked for inputs of what people would like to see. We got one input, and it was called quality expectation, basically uh, a visual inspection and condition of the fleet. Uh, type inspection. Very, very subjective. We do that on our fleet. We do spring and winter inspections and we ask our equipment foreman to evaluate the condition of their their vehicles and equipment. So that was that was the example and we asked for that information and that was um, that was provided. So that's what we did with the survey. So that helped a little bit but what uh, essentially it led us to do is look at okay what are our own ongoing efforts with metrics and where do we, uh, you know, where do we want to go? Where do we want to go for here? So these are the things we're going to keep trying to do. Um, these won't change. We're going to continue to strive to meet the goal that we set, report information annually. Uh, we're going to continue the webinars, just as we've done probably every three to four months. And uh, also, we're trying, still working with the states to help them report. And that can be Michigan working with you or some of your brother or sister yeah. states doing the same thing. We still want to collect those good news stories because reporting metrics is, uh, I think, critical to our job. We all deal with the numbers associated with uh, our fleets and stuff. Um, 
any any ideas to enhance the website or reporting which part of that will be identifying additional uh, metrics and then I mentioned earlier the low-hanging fruit or whatever concentrate to report one of the metrics if you haven't reported yet then take a look at PM compliance take a look at replacement recommended those two metrics because I would think uh, most of your offices would know that particularly the age of your fleet which which units or which group of units need need to be replaced and what that uh, what that percentage is this uh, next next chart is where I'd, I'm interested in today getting your uh, getting your input on this um, the first thing we want to do is one of our action items from here will be to identify what additional metrics we uh, want to do so I want to form a, a subcommittee of each of the regions have a couple reps from each region two volunteers I've already got two from the Midwest and two from the Northeast the Northeast is uh, Maryland and who else did I get Vermont and in the Midwest will be Michigan and Minnesota is there anybody here from the West that uh, wants to volunteer to participate Well, I tell you what, I'll email the people in the West and see, see if I can get some volunteers. How about the Southeast? We're not asking, the only work you'll have to do is show up for the webinar. Who's that? South Carolina? Georgia, okay, Georgia. Go Bulldogs, yeah, okay. Well, we'll uh, I'll, I'll email out the, to the Southeast if nobody else uh, wants to publicly volunteer the only thing it will require you to do is show up at the webinar online and and we're going to be seeking your ideas and opinions uh, i guess we might ask you to do a little bit but it won't shouldn't take a lot of your time most of the webinars last an hour or so 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 we want to do that so that's thanks uh georgia for volunteering uh, part of that uh, effort will be is we'll we'll take a look at the survey that happened look at do any of those metrics make sense otherwise we will decide on what metrics we think additional metrics would be good to add and like I said before it's probably we're talking one or two one or two metrics initially and then we'll do what we did with the original metrics is go through and document some of the pros and cons with that and probably we'll be presenting that at some uh, future time or one of our other webinars to say these were the suggestions so it's not like you know next month we're gonna here's a new metric start reporting them we're, we'll go through diligently and review review that uh, process uh, the other question that came up was you know had we done everything we can do as a group to facilitate metrics development do we need another study or a research project or do we need to bring a contractor on board to help us with this I mean, we've been doing this for six years now I think the group in Kansas City we agreed that we could do this because in the at the time in the room we had you know a couple hundred years of experience in fleet and we felt like that we were smart enough to do this versus paying a contractor a couple hundred thousand dollars or 75,000 whatever the price is to do this work it would just the price we would pay would be the time we invested to do this and I think what's happened so far with the input for all the states and everything I think uh, the DOTs have done a really good job at pulling this together so my question to you is do you think we need contractor help or support yes if we need help raise your hand no hand so you, if, yes we can do it ourselves yep okay okay then we'll keep doing that um, the other question that came up was do we need to engage management somehow upper management is there something we need to do um, with our upper managements to get them more um, sold on the process or or vested with the process either within your own DOT or have another DOT's management contact your management and say hey how can we help or will that just bring more pain and anguish to you okay um, but I can tell you what uh, in, in the case of MDOT uh, executive management has been very supportive of us we've gone and briefed in front of them and and they're very supportive of that because uh, a lot of the the folks don't understand um, what we're trying to do um, they didn't understand the impact of why it was important to do in some cases why it was important to do a PM inspection 
we've got to get out and do the work. And you explain to them, well, you know what, if you do the PM inspection, you can find problems and maybe correct them before they become big problems. And then you don't have lost time on a job because an underbridge inspection unit breaks down when you're trying to inspect or repair a bridge. Um, and that, you know, turned the light bulb on and they understood that. One thing that did come up, I think, if you don't have a fleet management system now and you're planning to get one that we need to do, is you really need to press the vendors to uh, set the fleet management system up or provide the software so you can metrics report out of there. Almost as simple as pushing a button. You know, yes, we have M5 Asset Works, but Andy has done the load of the work and and creating the reports because any automated report you get out of a fleet management system probably is going to be the question your boss is going to ask you. It's going to be a canned report and you're going to have to manipulate that to your specific needs. But you really need you really need to press the vendors to do that and we're going to be doing that with asset works a little more. We've already engaged them. We don't have a response yet. But whether it's asset works or agile assets or whatever fleet management system you're thinking about using, that's one of the questions you need to ask them when you're getting ready to purchase that is, tell me about how it's, this is gonna help me report metrics. And can you help me report PM compliance, replacements, utilization, availability? Um, because you may not have the resources to spend time writing reports, you may not have the expertise to do that. Um, I mean, we create a lot of reports, but we couldn't do it just solely on the fleet management system. Uh, if we didn't have Andy or somebody else, we would be we would be scrambling to provide a lot of these reports. But it's really paid us a lot of dividends. So I would encourage you to do that. Um, the other thing I wanted your feedback on, maybe Tim, I don't know if you can help with this one, is how do we better align the fleet metrics with MAP 21 reporting? Um, you know, that's a MAP 21's performance and performance and outcome based. There's like seven different areas that they uh, report on with seven different metrics. It's kind of like road and bridge condition, uh, pavement condition, traffic congestion, fatalities and accidents, all these different areas. But a lot of that, you know, rolls right into what we do with fleet because you can't maintain your, your uh, pavement and your bridge condition without the vehicles or equipment to do so. So I wondered, you know, what we can do to engage that. My understanding is that, uh, that this October is the first time that states are actually required to report out on MAP 21, which is mainly the operations community. But I don't know, Tim, is there anything we can do to get fleet as part of that? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to have a good answer to that. I would say yes, but I don't know who we I don't know who we would talk to. I don't yeah. even know who we would talk to on that. Um, you think, I know Lisa had to leave. You think she would know anything on that? Hmm. Well, I mean, that's something to consider uh, because once again, it's, you know, when you look at the logistics of anything, logistics seems to be taken for granted. Transportation um, support and all those ancillary support functions because everybody always expects the piece of equipment or the vehicle to be there. Um, and when it's there, you never get the pat on the back for, hey, it was there, good job. It's when it's not there, you get the soft boot in the, yeah. in the rear end about why it wasn't there and what the problems were and everything. Uh, the other idea uh, that we came up with um, was, you know, we have this committee that work the additional metrics, but to have a more broader committee that would develop long-term uh, goals and strategies for what we want to do with performance metrics or just fleet in general. And maybe part of it would be addressing vendors um, to provide us the tools we need to report out, um, develop a roadmap and things like that. So uh, uh, we'll be seeking um, participants for that as well. And I would think we'd have a something similar to where we'd have anywhere from, you know, six to eight people on that committee that would help outline some long-term goals because we've been doing this for six years it's not going to go away we're always going to be asked to report some sort of performance metrics and maybe there needs to be uh, some goals with that and a road map with where we want to go with this um, because it's pivotal to our job and you have to sell you know you have to sell what you're doing to get money uh, to get support so I think we need to, if we came up with a national approach on that, that might help people in their own DOTs. 
um, set up some basic goals and all that. Any comments, any other ideas, any things we can, we can look at doing? So what we're gonna do out of this is we're gonna identify a, a, a small group for additional metrics. Um, we'll come up with some way to address the vendors. We'll probably roll that into the long-term goals and strategy of uh, how we're gonna deal with uh, this. And then we need to come up with some way to address it through MAP 21, even though like you guys have done it with your state, but maybe there's some way to get, I mean, there's gotta be somebody in the subcommittee on highways or somewhere or within ASHTO that is like a point boy or girl for MAP 21 that we could talk to about this. Are you, I guess I'm not sure of your intent. Is it to have it included in MAP 21 requirements so that the states are forced to report equipment along? Just to get more visibility on it. Yeah. I, think I don't think the intention is to twist people's arms, although people right. could see that. But my thought is if it's included in there, then you'll start getting maybe the funding support or other things, not only to replace vehicles, but maybe to get the fleet management system or whatever you need. I mean, everybody, to, and my thought is everybody ought to have a fleet management system. If you're tracking your fleet on a spreadsheet or with crayons or on a chalkboard or whatever you're doing, that's not what we ought to be doing in the 21st century. Um, so, and I know a lot of people use their financial system to do that, and that's, as somebody mentioned, that's not really yeah. what that's intended for either. I mean, that's asset management so they can capitalize the cost of what, the assets or facilities are statewide but so that's the idea of if it's part of that i mean there could be a build up to it because map 21 that's been out there a while and we're just now mandating they reported in 2016 map, right map 21 was generated by by federal law i believe right yeah. and, and, and so i don't know if it would require legislation to to, to broaden it or if that's done through some interpretation at a department level or something but um you know i think we have to be clear on what our intent is right before you dive into that. right sure. right and my thought on it would be I mean, my understanding is you know the federal law that basically fhwa then requires the states to adhere to so if we could somehow maybe get fhwa to interpret the map 21 should include all the all assets including equipment Therefore, put the pressure on the individual DOTs to report it as an asset, or that they recognize it as an asset. That might be the best. Right. Thing. But, so my guess is they would fall over dumbfounded because usually they get pressure in the other direction. Right. To soften the requirements. <laughs> well, I just know my experience in logistics over the years has been this has been the same thing I've been saying is they tend to get overlooked until something's not provided, and we tend to be the last one that gets funding, the last one that gets attention and all that. And I know if everybody in this room could, for their state DOT, could report metrics now, you'd do it because it provides you such a great benefit to be able to have this data. So I wouldn't see it as an arm twisting technique per se. I, I imagine there would probably be some pressure applied that you'd be able to say, hey, well, give me this funding and I'll go buy this fleet management system and uh, we'll be able to track and report some of this stuff to help our uh, help ourselves out. So that's kind of the intent. So maybe it's, yeah, you're right, maybe it's somebody in FHWA. I don't know who that would be, but we could probably track that down. I guess I would ask the group here if you come up with any ideas on who those folks might be. Uh, I would assume there's somebody in Ashto that probably is the guru for MAP21. Um, so was the guy here, that Mark McConnell, would he know something about that? Yes. Yeah, okay. Know about it. Is he Mississippi? Yeah. So maybe maybe we need to reach out to him. I don't know. Brian Cawley as well with FHWA would be uh, a good contact. Mm -hmm. That's something I'd like to do with like that national committee there is have these type of things that the national committee can work on so it's just not one or two people doing it, uh, that they could help out running, running some of that stuff to ground. Um, because if it does require legislation, we know how long it takes to get that stuff done. So um, those are just some thoughts. I don't know, is other people, are there other recommendations or thoughts out there about, you know, where we've been, what we've been doing, and where we want to go with metrics or fleet issues in general that, re that will help with reporting of measurements? I mean, does everybody in the room report some measurements to their directors? It may not be a chart, but it may be 
a number or something? Does, does somebody not report something? You don't report anything. And not on a regular basis, you know, on an ad hoc basis when yeah. there are questions we certainly right. report. But I mean, what you do on the, the brine tanks, that's a metric. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying is, is on an ad hoc basis when something comes up and there's right. a need. Uh, um, certainly, I think from my perspective, it's not because there's not a desire from my right. executive staff to have that information. They would love it if I could report to them on a semi-annual or annual basis the health right. of our fleet. It's just a, a resources issue for right. us that we're right. in the weeds more than able to kind of oversee it. Well, that's tough when you got two people. It really yep. is. And, uh, and probably a lot of the state DOTs, I don't know if a lot of your decentralized your districts and regions so they're all doing I mean there's a lot of good things about being decentralized but when it comes to oversight and trying to compile data together uh, that's when you need a fleet management system and and stuff but decentralization can get out of control too so um, I've just seen it from both ends I've seen it work really well and I've seen it just you know it's so willy-nilly you can't get your arms around it so um, but, so are there any other thoughts I mean, does everybody think some of those ideas are good things we need to pursue? Or no, let's just forget about metrics and do something else. Okay. Anything else? There's my phone number and email. If I haven't pestered you enough to where you've delete, started deleting my emails. So anyway, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. Have a good day.